up there in Moravian Falls, and I'm typing away, and I'm typing. And the Lord said, I want you to teach my people how to walk on the wings of the wind. I said, okay, I will, I, I'm instructed to teach the people of God how to walk on the wings of the wind. He said, that's right. I want you to teach them how to soar above the chaos and the confusion of this world and live above the snake line. And so help me God. Just so help me God. The moment I type, God wants me to teach the people to walk on the wings of the wind. My son, Sean Paul, uh, lives down there in Texas. So he calls me. I'm in Moravian Falls. He calls me and he said, Dad. You're not going to believe this. He said, there's thousands of hawks cir circling above my house. And listen, he took his f phone and FaceTimed him. I saw with my own eyes thousands of hawks swirling like this, and they were riding the thermals. That These guys that do bird watching, they say you may never see them, but maybe one time your whole life. And just the moment I, I teach my people how to walk on the wings of the wind, these hawks, the book of Job, God said to Job, Hey, Job, are you the one that taught the, taught the hawks how to walk on the wind? We need to learn how to walk on the wind instead of stumbling in the dirt. Listen, God wants us to, how do we do it? Isaiah 40, 28 through 31 is a good one. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, I'll just kind of paraphrase it. Didn't he get the message? God's not tired. He's not up there going, oh, I never saw that coming. Hey, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. We need to learn how to wait upon God till he comes and boys us, picks us up. And we need to soar above the chaos. And we need to learn to walk on the wings of the wind. That's what this book's about. But then he told me, he said, now, Bobby, I want you to teach them how to soar so they can come back and roar. But the main thing, he said, teach my people how to have a firm foundation. I don't care how high you soar, how loud you roar. If you don't have a firm foundation, you'll embarrass God and, and the, whole, the whole thing. You really will. We've got to have a firm foundation. We've got to have that. Listen, I, I'm telling you, we've got to get back into the Word of God and let the Word of God get back into us. Jesus said it this way. He said, if you build upon the sand, your house will fall. But if you build upon the rock... The rock is his teaching. So anyway, this is the wings of the wind. And man, it, pretty wild in here. We talk about uh, many, many things. One thing, we talk about smart plans that work out. Got witty inventions. God wants to, re he said to tell the body of Christ, God is releasing new ways of doing old things. Anything that's been done once, there is a better way to do it. I'm telling you, he's releasing this. It says, witty inventions, smart plans that work out. Don't you want some smart plans? One little God idea can pay off a whole bunch of stuff. You understand that? But we've got to break out of the mold and really realize God's speaking to us. And we've got to learn to uh, write the vision, make it plain so people can comprehend what's going on. I hope you'll get the book. Uh, did, did you get one? You're, you're sure welcome to it. And I, the Lord came to me and said, I want you to sign books. I said to him, I don't sign books. He said to me, you do now. <laughs> this is all the absolute truth. My wife was with me, so I told Carolyn, I said, we're having a book signing. She said, I didn't know we signed books. I said, we do now. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. The first book I ever signed, I knew my name, so I signed it, Bobby. And the lady in front of me, I said, what is your name? She said, my name is Donna. And I said, is that D-O-N-N-A? -N -N and she said, That's correct. So I'm writing her name, D-O-N-N-A, -N -N and when the pen made the last stroke of an A, a Bible passage just went right across my spirit. So I thought, I'll write that verse. She's watching me write that verse in the, in the book she had just bought, and all of a sudden she screams, ah, fell in the floor. She said, that's it, that's the verse my mother used to train me and to teach me. And you can't imagine what happened at the, books, at the book table. One guy had his finger cut off, this one right here, cut off. And uh, he's there at the book table, and I said to him, what happened to you? But I think he thought I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a carpenter, but apparently not a very good one. I cut my finger off. I was actually joking. I said, you know, God's got original parts, and God grew this guy a finger. God grew him a finger at the book table. His wife was standing there with him. And he, he had his arm, his hand all wrapped up. And when I said, God's got original parts, he starts shaking his hand like that. And he says, honey, honey. And his wife, now here's what she told me. She said, I'm not one of these wild-eyed charismatics. I don't even believe half of this stuff. But I do work in the, I work in the emergency room. And I was there when they cut the, cut the rest of his thing and turned the skin and sewed it on. And 
God, he took the bandage off and God to groom a new finger. <laughs> now, I like that. Over and over, things happen at the book table. One guy, 40 years stone deaf, got his hearing just like that. They brought an old man. They brought an old man. I'm talking about old. I'm, 70, I'm 76. I was 77 in my, my next birthday. But, hey, I found a verse you can live as long as you want to. Or you can get old, swivel up like a pickle. I, I guarantee you. Uh, anyway, well, anyway, they brought this old man to me, and so he had fell off of a combine. Uh, he was 90-something years old, and his daughter was just talking like a, just, Daddy, we, we told Daddy, don't get a You can't tell a 90-year-old farmer what to do, you know? And so they, the dad had got on the combine, was trying to come down off of the combine, fell off, and I don't know what it did to his back, but it t- caused his leg to swivel and be pulled up like this, and he was crippled in his leg. So they bring him to the book table. This is fun. I get up. And he's, he's really old, and he's a German descent. And here's, I said, sir, could I pray for you? And here's what he said. You ready? I'm a Lutheran. <laughs> I said to him, that won't hurt. And God healed the man just like that. Now watch this. I go back to church. I, I went back to the church he, he goes to, and the whole side section was filled with, it, with his uh, descendants. Yeah, just because God healed him at the book table. Isn't that something? He's a greeter at one of the churches now, 90-something years old, a greeter at one of the churches. Listen, guys, don't you ever think, well, it's too late. No, it's never too late. Psalms 92, 10 says, I'll be anointed with fresh oil. That fresh oil will release my strength like that of a wild ox. It says, I'll be firm and, st-. I'm screaming, I'll be firm and stable, <laughs> bearing fruit in old age. Psalms 92, 10 through 16, firm and stable. Don't, don't, yeah, I don't know where we get this, that we got to get real old and we forget who we are. We don't know if we're bingo or bowling. I read the Bible. The Bible said God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. A sound mind means a mind that can catalog and retain facts. You, you understand that? So anyway, uh, God wants you to have a mind that can catalog and retain facts. Number one question I get asked over the earth is, how do you memorize a Bible? I studied it till all of my fingers wore the print off the page. I've got a stack of Bibles that high, and my wife can show them to you. They're, they're just disintegrated because of being used. And the Lord told me, he said, you better do that again. You know why? You never see the Bible twice the same way. It's like a diamond. And we're in the most revelatory season of any generation right now. We are. We're st- smack dab in Matthew 13, 16, and 17. Matthew 13, 16, 17 says, Blessed are your eyes, they see. Blessed are your ears, they hear. Many long to see what you see and couldn't. Many deeply desire to hear what you hear and didn't. We are privileged people. We're a revelatory people. God is answering that prayer Paul prayed in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light. You will have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. So anyway, I want us not to stumble around. I want us to walk in the light. I want us to make the best use of every moment. I know you want that or you wouldn't be in a meeting like this. This meeting is to inspire us and refire us. You know what I mean? It needs to inspire us and then refire us. There's no such thing in the Christian life as a secret disciple. No. No, there's a bunch of cowards that are afraid to stand up for God, but that, there's no such thing as a secret disciple. God said, you're supposed to be a city set on a hill. Don't light a torch and put it under the bed. You'll burn up the bed. You, you know what I mean? Let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Do you see what we're saying? I don't know. Yeah, no, I talk funny. I really do. Uh, I know I went to London, England, had to have an interpreter. Now, that's the truth. I went to London and had to have an interpreter. But what's going to stun you is this. I, I talk Texican. You know, here's the deal. If you ever hear God talks, he talks just like me. No, I'll tell you how he talks. You want to know? He talks exactly like you listen. That's John 10, verse 3. John 10, verse 3 says, my sheep hear my voice. John 10, 27 says, other voices, they flee. Okay, don't you want to, the best way in the world to hear the voice of God is intimacy. Intimacy, get close to him. 